All right, there's what's left of my fire from last night. Small fire, easy to clean up. Just gotta push some dirt over it. And then maybe just throw some rocks on there. Some rocks, a couple of pine cones. Take some of this debris over here on the fourth floor. Take some of this stuff. Right here. You can just sprinkle it out over that. <clears throat> there, you can't tell the fire was even there. All right. Now that it's warmed up enough, I can fill my fingers again. And now I can operate a fishing reel to see if we can catch some fish. All right, so Saturday morning, I fished that pitcher lake a little bit. This morning, I fished it a little bit last night just before dark. Out of all the times I was fishing, I only saw maybe one fish surface, and I gave it everything I had to offer, but no luck. So I'm gonna mosey on out of here. I got camp picked up and I'm gonna head on down and try to find some other lakes that'll give me some love back. But uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll probably end up second night over in the Brown Duck Basin area. So, but I'm gonna fish some lakes on my way there. <clears throat> All right, after a short off trail jaunt, I think I've come to the first of several no-name ponds. I'll fish these on my way back. See how it goes. This is a cute little pond. It might be too little to support fish, but I'm gonna take a look and see. Guaranteed this doesn't get any pressure. This is off the beaten path for sure. Pretty. And off trail a little bit further. Takes me to another very, very pretty pretty lake oh my goodness this thing is spectacular with those cliffs in the background and everything it's so awesome and looky there looks like there's some wild blueberries at least I think they're blueberries there's some more Well, fished this quite a bit. These lures and flies and everything I had. No luck. I don't know. I know there's got to be fish in here. But they don't like what I'm giving them, so I'm going to mosey on my way. But man, it is sure is pretty. All right, I've been taking a shortcut off trail route back to the main trail. Probably shave off a good mile, but usually the off trail routes are pretty ugly, but this one's been kind of down through this meadow. Hardly any denfalls, no boulders. It's pretty nice. 
I should be back to the main trail in no time. Hey, looky there. Got a nice elk or a deer rub. I know they're in here because I've been seeing signs all over the place, but that's pretty cool. Well, surprisingly, as small as this little pond is, I just saw a little fish swim away from this little shoreline right here. God, this thing can't be more than a foot and a half deep. But yeah, the fish was maybe, I don't know, six, six, eight inches. It was a little guy, but there's one in here for sure. Well, I made it back to Raspberry Hill. Huh. Should be all downhill from there. Wow. That is a steep climb. Started out at the bottom of that in the boulders and did like a couple of switchbacks. Then to there. And to here. And that's the top. Whew. All right. Back down into Brown Duck Basin. I just left East Basin. I think that's what they call it. Anyway, no luck over there for fishing for Pitcher Lake, Horseshoe Lake, all the little ponds around it. Man, I've fished, fish, fish, nothing. Did see one little fish uh, in a little frog pond just off the trail, but I didn't fish for it. He was just a little guy. But anyway, now that I'm back down into Brown Duck Basin, there's still, I don't know, three or four different lakes I want to fish here that are off trail, so I'm going to head to them. Um, first one being Stewart Lake, which is just north of Clements Lake. So I'm going to off trail to there and check it out. Yeah, look at that. That looks like some kind of a bear den or a cougar den, maybe. That's pretty cool. Glad they're not here. <laughs> well, there it is. If you didn't have a map, you'd never know it was there because that was quite a lot of bushwhacking and death falls and a little bit of bouldering to find this thing. Hopefully, oh, it's nice size too. Hopefully I'll be able to catch a fish or two out of this thing. That'd be way cool. So this is Stewart Lake. Well, I see fish surfacing everywhere. So hopefully that's a good sign. Things to come. All right. Stewart Lake is on fire with activity for sure. First cast. Hooked one, got him part way in, he got off. Just lots of followers, nearly every cast. Hooked a couple others, again, got off. Anyway, so there's plenty of fish in here. I wasn't able to get one out, but it's a lot of fun trying. Now I'm gonna try this upper lake above this, another off trail lake. This one I think is called Clements Creek Lake. Anyway, headed there next. And there she be, Clements Creek. Yeah, this is the upper Clements Lake. There's no trail to get here, so I don't know. Hopefully the fishing will be good. Look at that. Easy there, slugger. That's a nice fish. Heck yeah. And another. Not as big as that first one, but still. Pretty nice. Well, and another. This lake is on fire. It's 
These are all cutthroats, it looks like. Another nice one. Yeah, look at that beauty. All right, that was a success. Hallelujah, freaking Luya. Man, this has been a tough, tough luck trip, but man, this, this lake is on fire. I just catching one right after another. Cutthroats one right after another. Just about every other cast is reeling one in. Pretty awesome. There's a couple other lakes I want to check out before we make camp for the night, so I'm going to head that way. Well, I think I'll bypass fishing that one. All right, well, there's a nice little pond right there, and it feeds into Clements Lake just beyond that little berm right there. I'll fish them both and then head on over to the Little and big dog lakes for camp. Well, first cast into Clements Lake. Got me something. That's crazy. The litter hit the water and bam. Let's see what we got here. A little brook, it looks like. No, it's cutthroat. Feisty little bugger. Nice. And another. It's just one right after another in these Clements Lakes, the upper and lower one. That one's a bigger one than the first one. Well, and another. Boy, this is just, just catching them one right after another. This lake's on fire. All right, this Clemens Lake was on fire. Caught several cutthroat, just one right after another. If it wasn't a, a catch, it was a hit. Pretty nice. It's close to the trail too, so you can just hike right to it. Hey, there's a deer. What do you know? Well, here's another off-trail lake. It's called Aspen Lake. I don't know. Let's see if it has any fish in it. Pretty. Well, I was hoping to camp here because I'm out of water. I'm tired and hungry. The sun's going to go down in about 45 minutes. And uh, that'd be a good spot to stop, but... This pothole, rocky area here, there's no place to pitch a tent. So I'll press on. Well, all right, that was a long, hard day. Um, had a lot of miles off trail. I'll bet probably a third of my day was spent off trail going to all these lakes that are tucked up in the, the bowl and the basin that people don't get to. Um, most of the lakes that I tried over in the east basin area over by Pitcher Lake and Three Lakes and Horseshoe Lake and all the little ponds around there, didn't, I didn't do very well. They weren't, they weren't good fishing for me anyway. I'm sure they got fish in them because I, I did see some fish activity, but I couldn't, couldn't catch any. But anyway, when I got back over into the brown duck basin, I started getting off trail lakes over here and started doing really well. And just about every lake I stopped at was just on fire. Fishing was really good. So... I got one more um, 
couple of lakes to try on my way out of here. Uh, little dog, big dog. Maybe I'll just do one of the dogs, but I gotta <clears throat> see about how it, the timing is. I ended up running out of daylight and had to camp over here by this little frog pond over here by kind of by Brown Duck Lake, but it's just a little pond. It's got lilies on it, but just as it was getting dark, I saw some fish activity on the surface, surprisingly. It didn't look like it would support any fish, but there's plenty of fish in there. I could see them going crazy. So I'll try that in the morning before I pack up and get out of here. Report back in the morning. Well, all right, it's about 8 a.m. I'm all packed up. And I'm going to hit this one little lily pond behind me where I saw a fish jumping last night. And then one little pond just behind that. Try it. And then I'm going to bust out of here and head around the back side of this lily pond lake over to Brown Duck Lake, which is just over beyond those that meadow there. And then I'll circle around to... I think they call it Big Dog Lake. I'll try that as my last stop on the way out. All right, I had one good bite on this beautiful, picturesque, reflective pond. Holy cow, this is beautiful. Anyway, I didn't bring one in, but I did get a bite. I know there's fish in here. So... Maybe another time. I'm going to go try those other lakes now. Man, that's pretty. Holy cow. Well, there she is. Pretty good sized little pond. But man, getting close to the edge to fish is tough. It's pretty boggy in here. All right, took me about 22 minutes of off trail scrambling. Some of it good, some of it deadfall crossings, but it's not too bad. But anyway, about 22 minutes off the main trail to get to this little dog. Hopefully, the views and the fishing will pay off. Gonna try to get down to the shoreline. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful lake. I already saw a fish surface, so that's a good thing. Pretty off the beaten path though. I doubt too many people come visit this thing. But, oh, there's another fish just jumped out in the middle there. Pretty. Well, success. Oh, he got off. Well, I've had a bite, follower, and a hook. But it just got off, so try again. Let's see, and another. This lake is on fire. Whoa, hello there. Looks like this lake is producing. Stop flopping, dude. Nice little brook trout. All right, this lake is on fire. It's every single cast. There's either a follower, a hit, or a fish. They're not real big, but golly, they're fun to catch. Awesome. All right, after... A 15 minute grueling deadfall ridden off trail. 
I've made it to this big dock. It's my last stop of this trip. Throw a line in for a little bit. Filter some water for the hike out. And we'll go from there. Man, a lot of deadfall. It's just like everywhere. You gotta go walk around, you gotta walk over. Walk around, you gotta step over. Anyway. Well, with all of that, it looks like I've made it. Oh wow, look at that. That's a big lake. All right, I've walked about halfway around this thing and the water is super shallow all the way around the edge. I didn't go over by those boulders. It's probably a little deeper over there, but I didn't see any good opportunities to get a fishing line in right here and I'm pressed for time. It's getting late in the day and I need to be headed back. So another time we'll give her a try. Look at that. It's the brown duck arch. Now that I've passed under it, I hope it's the gateway to the main trail so I don't have to go through any more of this boggy deadfall, off trail, freaking hard hiking. All right, I just wanted to comment on this trip a little bit. This is one of those trips where I had a gumption to go and check all of these off trail lakes and areas and you know I figured it was going to be a solo trip because I don't got too many friends and family that want to do the hard grueling off trail boulder crawling tree crossing mog bog crap that I went through to hit to those areas but not to mention I probably I'm in this trip about, oh, I don't know, 30, almost 40 miles in three days, so I covered a lot of ground, too. I'm just getting pretty close here to the main trail now, finally. I just finished my last of my off-trail lakes that I wanted to do. All in all, it was a successful trip. I found several good lakes that I want to do a return trip to. And I found some that, I don't know, maybe uh, I don't want to return to. But fishing was good. And even on the lakes where the, the fishing wasn't so good, Man, the views were spectacular. Got to see some wildlife. It's just an awesome all around experience. But man, am I wore out. Because that was a lot of country to cover without the uh, luxurious trail options that you have. Anyway. Looks like I'm almost back to the trail, so now I can get down to the last seven miles down to the truck. I just, there's cows on this trail. I slipped in some cow crap on the trail. It reminded me of a song. Old song, old western song. I think it's Red Stovine or somebody like that. Anyway, this song is uh, Yippee Aye Cow Patty. It's the name of the song. And there's a line in there that makes me laugh. It says, uh, moral of the story is, you got to watch your step when you know the chips are down. That's <laughs> pretty funny. All right, it's about noon. I'm hungry. I'm out of water, so it's the first water source I come to, so I'm going to 
get some water, grab a quick bite to eat, and hit the trail again. Hope I can be down the truck by two or a little before. So I am impressed by this Sawyer squeeze. I mean, I was able to fill that 64 ounce bag and filter two liters of water in less than four minutes. It's freaking amazing. That thing has a high capacity flow, more so than the Sawyer Mini. Sawyer Mini does a pretty good job, but this thing is outstanding. And today for lunch, quick on the run, see a whey protein baked bar, chocolate chip cookie dough, Robert Irvine's Fit Crunch. Gives me a calorie boost of 380 calories. And let's see, fiber, two grams of fiber. Uh, 30 grams of protein, wow. Okay, that's pretty cool. All right, well, I'll give my feet a quick rest before I bust out to the finish line. Just wanted to give a shout out to some of the YouTubers that I've been watching. Kind of got me into wanting to explore more trails and more areas and originally you know my my wife she wanted to do the AT trail so I thought oh well, well let's look into that so I started searching for AT trail videos and I found this one this lady named Dixie uh, homemade wonderlust is her channel we watched her trip on the AT trail and was pretty intrigued by that I watched a few others including uh, uh, let's see following Redbeard was one. Um, let's see who else. Anyway, so as I started exploring, I thought, well, what about other through hikes? So I started looking at Utah to see if I could do some maybe shorter through hikes to prepare for the AT trail someday if we ever do it. And I started looking at uh, Utah and I found the Highline Trail and I heard of others doing it and I thought, oh, that'd be pretty cool. So I looked into that, and I watched a few videos on that, and I watched one on, uh, uh, I think his name is Perry Taylor, I watched his go through, and I watched one on uh, Wasatch Will, uh, I watched another one on Following Redbeard again, and the Z-Pax group, um, and I started thought, oh, I'm going to start exploring some areas and posting some of my videos, and maybe some people can make some use of them. So as I did such, I started getting some subscribers, some of the local guys. Uh, Backcountry Exposure is one of them. Uh, let's see. The Backpack Blazer, I've been watching his videos. They're pretty good. Um, Wasatch Will again. And uh, Harry Taylor, been doing those videos. Uh, the Wasatch Gear Review, I think is his TWGR channel. That's pretty good. Anyway, I'm going to continue to post my videos and hopefully somebody can, you know, when they're searching for a place to go, they can see, you know, one of my videos and maybe go, oh, that looks like a pretty cool place. Maybe we can go there. But, but again, my primary focus is just to post these for my friends and family so they can see where I've been and what I'm doing. But if others can benefit from it too, great. It's a win-win. Thanks for watching. Oh, and I can't forget, I've been watching this guy named Second Chance Hiker. This guy was uh, 400 pounds or close to 400 pounds, and he decided to make a change in his life and make his life better. And he decided to go do the PCT on a whim. It's crazy. But man, his journey is intriguing to watch. Uh, he made a pledge that he would uh, lose 200 pounds or crawl his way to, from Mexico to Canada if he had to, but he wasn't going to leave the trail until he made a difference in his life. And I just started thinking about that because of that Fit Crunch bar that I just ate was 300 calories, 380 calories. But man, that ain't nothing compared to the amount of calories you're expending up here on the trail so kudos to him and hopefully he has a successful journey um i think i'm on like eight, episode 83 of his journey and i he, think he's somewhere up in washington right now so anyway hopefully he's successful in his quest
All right, now for my be prepared spiel. So if anybody's out there hiking alone, because uh, they like to hike alone or they just don't have anybody to go with, or if you're doing any of this off-trail scrambling stuff to get to some of the remote areas, it's always good to have a way to communicate to the outside, whether it's the Garmin inReach or some kind of a spot device or some other way to get out. It's just super nice to be able to get in touch with somebody if you have a you know medical emergency or you're running late or whatever the reason. It's just it's like having the buddy system, you know. You may not have a physical person with you, but you got an ability to get out and ask for help if needed. So anyway, just consider that. It comes with a price, but price of life is guaranteed a lot more than the cost for that device and the, and the service plan that comes with it. All right, back in view of Moon Lake and the trailhead being down there. Awesome. All right, as I head down this final stretch of this trail to finish up my 40 miles, give or take a little bit, I want to say I only saw two people the entire time. The uh, first day on my way in, I saw a guy, I think his name was Scott from Bountiful. He was on his way out, and he was doing the Brown Duck Loop Trail, which is about 30 mile trail. And then yesterday, just before dark, while I was searching for a campsite, I saw one guy off in the trees over by Clements Lake. Aside from that, I haven't seen anybody, with the exception to a few cows messing up the trail. My goodness, these cows freaking make a mess everywhere. And they get all sloshing around in those bogs around those ponds. It's just miserable. It'd be nice if cows didn't have the opportunity to come up here, but well, it is what it is. And more edibles on the trail. Dandelion greens make yourself a salad to go with your berries well I don't think that fire pits 200 feet from the trail or the water what do you think all right so I came to the trail junction here that's the way I came in last time and this time but there's this trail heads down to the campground which is pretty close to where the trailhead is and it looks like it's about a quarter to a half mile shorter so I'm gonna try it worst case scenario I'll have to walk up the road maybe a little bit but I'm gonna go for it check it out yet another wild edible on the trail thistle it looks like we've got another variety of possibly blueberries I'm not sure. I'm going to have to check them out. There's some more over there. I think those right there are plantain, which are also edible, but I'll have to look. But there's several varieties of that all over the place. Well, I must be getting close because I hear vehicles and I see Moon Lake through the trees right there. Man, that's a big lake. Well, after seeing this steep switchback trail, I think this might be the way to go down and go up the other way. Because the other way is steep, but it's, I don't know, I think this would be worse. But coming down, this seems pretty doable and pretty nice. And there she goes, Char. She gave me the last little jaunt into the trailhead. So nice of her. She's such a polite lady. So nice. She's the campground host up here at Moon Lake Campground. And uh, that trail put me right down into the closed campground. And she was in there shooing people out. But uh, she was nice enough to bring me up here. So that last half mile, I guess I cheated. <laughs> but it was great. She was. It was a nice, nice talking to her. And this scenery in here is beautiful, by the way. Anyway, it's a great trip. Great finish.